Om Shri Sai Ram. Our humble pranams at the Divine Lotus feet of our beloved Bhagavan Shri Satya Sai Baba. A very warm welcome to our respected elders, brothers and sisters. Today, we've all gathered here to celebrate the auspicious festival of Buddha Purnima. It is a day where people all over the world commemorate with three great events. The birth, the enlightenment and the day when Gautama Buddha attained Nirvana. On this auspicious day, dearest Swami, we, the youth of Singapore, have been blessed to perform this drama in your divine presence, a drama based on the teachings of Lord Sakyamuni Buddha. Dearest Swami, we seek your guidance and blessings. All right! Our Honorable Judge, Ravi Tanduka, presides over the case today. Today is a very auspicious day for all Buddhists as it is Buddha the day when Buddha supposedly attained Nirvana. It is thus very apt that we have gathered here to hear the case of the government against the Interfaith Council on the charge that God does not exist. If the government proves this case beyond the shadow of a doubt that indeed God does not exist. We will have to remove any references to God from our education system and from our government policies. Can we now have the public prosecutor representing the government, Mr. Boris Brewster, to start the session please? Your Honour, I would like to call Mr. Mohan Lal, President of the Interfaith Council, to the stand, please. Mohan Lal, Hazel Ho! Mr. Mohan Lal, do you swear? To tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Mr. Mohan Lal, do you know the problem science has with God? No, and I don't believe there is a problem. Mr. Mohan, I take it that you are a man of God. Am I right? Yes, I am. Then tell me, is your God good? Well, of course, God is love. So I presume that your God made everything in this world. Yes, indeed. God is all-powerful. He created everything from the tiny ant to the vast cosmos. Excellent, Mr. Mohan Lal. Can you then please tell the court if there is sickness in this world, immorality of character, hatred amongst men, ugliness, etc., etc., etc. Do they exist in this world? Yes, I suppose so. Then who created them, Mr. Mohanlal? Take your time, Mr. Mohan. I... I don't know. Then let me remind you. Mr. God created everything from the tiny ant to the vast cosmos. So Mr. God created all evil. Isn't that so, Mr. Mohan? So there must be a bad God, right? Uh, well, maybe. Yes or no, Mr. Mohan Lal? It's a simple question. I, I can't be sure. 
but but it's possible. Mr. Mohan, have you seen your God? Have you heard your God? Have you had any sensory perception of your God whatsoever? Answer me, please. No, I have not had any sensory perception of God to date. Your Honor, then how can anyone have faith in God's existence? According to the rules of science, his God doesn't exist. What do you say to that, Mr. Mohanlal? Where is your God now? I really, really don't know, sir. Answer the question, Mr. Mohanlal. Objection, Your Honor. This is battering of the witness. Objection overruled. Mr. Boris's questions are very relevant to this case. It's okay, my lord. I have nothing left to say. I rest my case. Very well. Mr. Gopal, representing the Interfaith Council, your witness. Thank you, my lord. Mr. Mohanlal, have you heard of the Bajagovindam Sloka? Yes, Mr. Gopal. I'm very well versed in it. Would you then be kind enough to recite it for us? Bajagovindam, 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 Bajagovindam. Govindam bhaja mudamate Govindam bhaja mudamate Samprapte sannihite kale Samprapte sannihite kale Nahi nahi rakshati dokro karne Nahi nahi rakshati dokro karne Thank you, Mr. Mohan. My Lord, Adi Shankaracharya has explained in his famous poem, the Bajagovindam, thus. O foolish man, chant the name of Govinda. The rules of grammar will not come to your aid when the end approaches. Objection! This is not a singing contest. A song is not an argument. What is your point, Mr. Gopal? Overruled. The song has deep significance, Mr. Boris. Mr. Gopal, please continue. Your Honor, I have no further questions for Mr. Mohan Lal. Thank you, Mr. Mohan. Uh, Mr. Boris, my point is that one cannot use science as a basis to understand God. Science can't even explain the concept of a simple thought. To further my case, I would like to call to the stand our Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Srinivas. Our Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Srinivas, has a hole. Mr. Srinivas, do you swear to tell the truth? The whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Sir, your government is working on the premise of duality. That for example, there is a good God and a bad God. Am I right? Yes, we are. Everything in this world must have two extremes. Mr. Prime Minister, can you then please tell the court if there is such a thing as darkness? What kind of question is this? Are you questioning my intelligence? Your Honor, you don't expect me to answer that question, do you? Answer the question please, Mr. Prime Minister. Well, of course, there is. No, sir, there isn't. You can have low light 
normal light, bright light, flashing light. But if you have absolutely no light, it is called darkness. Isn't it? Yes, I suppose you are right. So there is no such thing as darkness itself. Darkness is just the absence of light. Am I correct, sir? Yes. But what is your point to all this, Mr. Gopal? Mr. Srinivas, my point is that the government's logic is flawed to start with. This government assumes that the concept of God is something finite, something which we can qualify as good or bad. But just like there is no such thing as darkness, there is no such thing as bad. Bad is just the absence of good. Very convincing, Mr. Gopal. So, there is no such thing as a bad god. But your honor, the defense has still not proven that God exists. No one has even seen or heard God. Mr. Gopal, please address Mr. Boris's point. With pleasure, your honor. Mr. Srinivas. I am sure you will agree that it is a scientific truth that we require oxygen to survive. Am I right? Yes. Wonderful. Then tell me, have you ever seen, touched or had any sensory perception of oxygen? No, I can't say that I have, Mr. Gopal. Exactly. But we know it is there because we can experience it. This very same principle applies to God. God is everywhere, including inside us. We just have to put in effort to experience Him. So, you're saying that God has to be experienced and cannot be perceived through our five senses. You're absolutely right, my lord. So, Mr. Gopal, if God does exist, then what is the purpose of life that God has ordained for us? My lord, that is indeed a very good question. Since it is Buddha Purnima today, I would like to draw the court's attention to Buddha's life as an answer to your question. Determined to find the truth behind the purpose of life, Buddha wandered all over the country in search of spiritual peace and liberation, leaving behind a life of luxury. After many years of self-inquiry, he realized that the secret of spiritual wisdom was not to be attained from scholars, but in fact, the hidden treasure of enlightenment lay deep within one's own self. The time was near when Lord Buddha had to leave his physical body. He summoned his stepbrother to his side to share his last words. He noticed that Ananda was shedding tears. My dear Ananda, why are you shedding tears? My Lord, I cannot live without you. Ananda, you should not worry about the physical body. The body is made up of the five elements and thus is bound to perish someday. There are thousands like you who still experience sorrow at the sight of dying persons, but yet they make no effort to find out the purpose of life. Dearest Lord, please share with me 
What is the purpose of life? The purpose of life is to realize that we are divine. But how, my Lord, how can we realize this profound truth? For 26 years, I sought the answer to this same question by studying scriptures, meeting saints and sages, listening to their teachings. Finally, after many years of seeking answers, I realized the truth that will help one achieve life's purpose. What is it? What is it, O Lord? Please, please enlighten me. The only way to realize our divinity is through the sanctification of the five senses, namely our hearing, touch, sight, taste and smell. Sanctification of our senses is the key to realizing our divinity. Sharing these pearls of wisdom, Buddha breath is last. If the senses are polluted, of what avail are spiritual exercises? When the water in a tank is polluted, all taps will only provide polluted water. Your heart is the tank. Keep it pure through purity of thought, word and deed. This is the last and most important message practiced by Lord Buddha Himself. Let us now see the impact of Buddha's last message in the courtroom. Let the trial continue. Very, very interesting. So, Buddha has said that our life's purpose is to realize that we are all divine. And the key to this realization is the sanctification of the five senses. Mr. Gopal, what do you mean by the sanctification of our five senses? How can we achieve this? My Honorable Prime Minister, we need to become the master of our five senses by reducing our desires and by using our discrimination to always See good, be good, and do good. Objection! Mr. Gopal is not addressing life as we have it in reality. Using our discrimination to do good, we can do. But reducing our desires, that is easier said than done. I agree with Mr. Boris. Mr. Gopal, we have too many desires. What you ask for is just not possible in today's world. Desires? Can desires ever be fulfilled? One desire leads to another, and another, and yet another. Buddha has said, He who has many desires is the poorest man. Buddha was born as a prince, but he was not interested in worldly possessions. He realized that no matter how wealthy one is, no one is free from sickness, no one is free from old age, and no one can escape from the jaws of death. To illustrate my point, Let us now share with you a story about Lord Buddha to illustrate Gopal's point, as told by our beloved Lord, Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba himself. There once lived a Maharaja who was listening to Buddha's sermon on contentment and renunciation. He was an ardent follower of Buddha and wished to earn the blessings of Buddha. Advisor. Yes, Your Majesty. 
I wish to earn the grace of Buddha. Please advise me on how to do so. O King, Buddha always keeps with him a rattle drum. A rattle drum? What on earth for? Your Majesty, Lord Buddha says he shall play on this rattle drum the day a person who has made the greatest sacrifice approaches him. Aha! Wonderful! This is an excellent opportunity. I will shower Buddha with the rarest treasures and win his grace. Advisor, arrange for this at once. Yes, Your Majesty. Wishing to attain this distinction, the Maharaja filled his treasure chests with the finest of treasures and set off to visit Buddha. He hoped to offer the treasures to Buddha and earn his grace. On the journey to see Buddha, the Maharaja and his entourage came across an old woman. My salutations to you, O oh great king. Yes, mother. What can I do for you? I have not eaten for days. I'm very hungry. Will you give me some food? Most certainly. Advisor, here, take this pomegranate fruit and end your hunger. Thank you, great king, for your generosity. You are most welcome. Mother, I must take your leave now, as I'm in a hurry to see Lord Buddha. Aha! The kind and loving Lord Buddha. Fortunate are those who can be in his presence. Is he somewhere nearby? Yes, mother. He's within two days walking distance from here, near the Bodhi tree. Lord Buddha has said he shall play on his rattle drum on the day a person who has made the greatest sacrifice approaches him. I want to be that person, so I am rushing off to meet him with offerings of precious gems and gold from all over the country. Oh, very good news. May Lord Buddha bless you as you desire. Please, do not let me take any more of your time. Thank you, Mother. I shall now take your leave. My Lord Buddha, how fortunate are those who can see you. I too must muster the strength from this old and fragile body to travel the distance to meet you. But how can I meet you with nothing to offer? Aha! How forgetful I am! I offer this pomegranate fruit to him. I'm sure he will take it. The Maharaja was the first to reach Buddha's abode and he showered him with gems and gold. He keenly awaited the rattle of Buddha's drum but he did not hear it. Just then, the old lady arrived and approached Buddha, barely able to stand firm after the long and arduous journey. Come, my dear mother, how can I help you? I'm very poor. I have nothing to offer you except my devotion in the form of this pomegranate fruit. Please bless me by accepting this small offering. 
offering. My dear mother, I will accept this gift from you with all my heart. Lord Buddha, I offered so much to you. Gold, jewels, coins and much more. However, you did not sound the drum, but you rattled it after receiving a small fruit. Is this a great sacrifice? Money comes and goes. Morality comes and grows. I want your devotion, not your money. It is natural for a Maharaja to offer gold. But what great sacrifice is made when a tired, starving old woman offers the pomegranate fruit to the Guru despite her hunger? She did not care even for her own life. What greater sacrifice can there be? The true sacrifice is the sacrifice of one's desires. Man is deluded by his unlimited desires. He is living in a world full of dreams and illusions. Swami says, Heads in the forest, hands in society. But man is not following. He is forgetting the supreme consciousness that resides within. We must all put a ceiling on our desires to realize our divinity. So, may we sanctify our senses by reducing our desires and with proper discrimination, we can realize the divinity within us as preached by Lord Buddha. You're absolutely correct, Mr. Srinivas. I have been a lawyer for 15 years and I have never, ever lost a case. I came in here today with the notion that God is bad. But I've learned that God is love. I came in here thinking God is now imagination. But I realized that he is to be experienced. I came here knowing God does not exist. But I'm leaving convinced that he does. You fought a brilliant case, Mr. Gopal. You are a worthy opponent. No, sir. You are mistaken. It is God who has won this case. You have not lost anything today. You have only gained in awareness. Swami has said, Take one step towards me, and I shall take a hundred towards you. I merely gave the Lord's name on my lips and took up this case. With the Lord's name, any noble task can be accomplished. Name. We, we feel no, no bliss. bliss. No bliss. No bliss. No bliss. 
प्रेम भक्ति बिना उधार नहीं गुरु सेवा बिना निर्वाण नहीं without serving the master we cannot attain enlightenment हरी भजन बिना सुख शांति नहीं जप ध्यान बिना सम योग नहीं without contemplation there is no union with God प्रभु धर्श बिना प्रज्ञान नहीं without seeing him all there is no wisdom दया धर्म बिना सद कर्म नहीं without compassion and righteousness there is no pure deed भगवान बिना कोई अपना नहीं other than the lord there is no dear one हरि नाम बिना परमात्मा नहीं हरि भजन बिना सुख शांति नहीं सुख शांति नहीं सुख शांति नहीं प्रैक्टिस बुद्धस टीचिंग्स Sanctify our senses. See good, be good, and do good. And most importantly, remember the Lord's name at all times. The court is dismissed. Jai Sai Ram. <laughs>